Toronto man's word of the day is Chris, which means mad dope or crispy. You know what I mean? So my socks them, my green socks them, they're mad crisp fam. What's up, fam? It's your boy Demir here, purveyor of all sounds underground. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel today, where I'll be discussing the topic of how you should get started in underground electronic music in terms of the gear that you should be looking at to get started. But before we jump into things, what I need from you is that SLC. Hit subscribe, like, comment, and more importantly, hit the notifications bell to stay in touch with the new videos that we have up and coming. We have over 48% of our viewers that are watching these videos, taking in the content, and you haven't subscribed. What's the deal with that, fam? Subscribe, notifications, do it now. All right, so point number one, the first thing you'll absolutely need, and it's the focal point of modern day music today, is a computer. And you can decide between Mac or a PC. It's entirely up to you. I will always say to you, building out your own PC is probably the most affordable way to do things. But depending on the DAW you're using, like for myself, I'm using Logic. I have a iMac 27 inch behind me, if you can see that there. And it's a refurb. Uh, it has a Intel i7 core and I maxed out all of the RAM and it was super affordable, anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. You can find uh, Apple certified uh, sellers or dealers that work independently and all of the stuff you purchase from them have the same warranty. But either way, you absolutely need to get a workhorse of a machine to get going on this one and it'll cost you anywhere from a thousand to just over two thousand um, dollars and I want to make a point here about computers uh, everyone's talking about the new M1 uh, Mac processor and with any new technology my rule of thumb has always just been to wait about a year I think with the M1 and where technology is at it's really going to be six months because things are just moving so quickly so I might actually get a Mac Mini with an M1 processor in it after some time, depending on the reviews. But again, point number one is a computer. It'll run you anywhere between a thousand or just over 2000 bucks. Point number two is to decide what DAW or digital audio workstation you wanna work within. I asked this question recently of this community and overwhelmingly, I think over 70% of people are using Ableton uh, for their music creation process or the focal point of their music creation software. And the balance, I think around 17 to 20% are on Apple's Logic and then the rest of them flow into either Pro Tools, FL Studio and other uh, solutions like UAD's Luna. And then there's the Elusive Studio One and Cubase as well. I'm using Logic just because I like the workflow I started initially with Cubase, went to Reason, and then got into Logic, and it just makes sense for me. So my answer on this one, and I did make a video on Ableton versus Logic and which one I thought was better for me. I'm not going to get into a war or that conversation here. Rather, I'm just going to tell you, find the one that works well for you in your workflow in terms of what you are comfortable with and go from there. Quite frankly, I think you can make any DAW sound the way you want it once you've found your sound and you'll just find the things that execute on that accordingly. Point number three, decide on what sound card you want. Uh, I would highly recommend getting a sound card and not leveraging your computer's internal sound card. It's just not built for handling massive loads of audio. And when we have solutions like Loop Cloud and Splice, as well as Outputs Arcade, it's really important for you to get something that easily takes all of that digital audio stuff and converts it into a workable fashion within your DAW without drawing the load on your computer. It just makes sense. And over time, your music library or sound library rather is just gonna grow 
So I highly recommend a sound card. Uh, Focusrite makes uh, great starter sound cards in my uh, opinion. I used an Apogee 1 and an Apogee 2 for the longest while before I upgraded to something more professional like UAD's Twin and Apollo 8. All right, and point number four is to get a external hard drive. I, uh, when I started out, I made sure to get two of them, 500 gigs each. Um, one was for backing stuff up and the other one was for just holding my entire sound or sample library. It makes absolute sense and with the solutions that are available today, especially the SSD drives um, from Samsung, there's a T7 terabyte one. It looks like a little square, a little bit of a wallet and it is phenomenal. I highly recommend it for just over 300 Canadian dollars in some cases depending on where you purchase it from, it is well worth the spend. And uh, you'll have peace of mind backing your stuff up and also less load on the computer's own internal uh, SSD drive or hard drive um, to process things. So highly recommend getting an external drive because you'll continue to just build your sounds and you need a place to store that securely as well as come up with a decent backup system to make sure you don't lose all of your stuff. Point number five is to consider a MIDI keyboard or controller. I can't seem to find my little mini Akai MPC. I think it's a 16. We'll post a picture of it up for you. Um, and if I find it, I'll take a shot of it and throw it up. But anyway, I purchased a little small one. It ran me, I think, $80 Canadian. And it's super affordable and convenient, especially for traveling purposes. Um, as well, if you're not really into uh, a keyboard per se, and you are leveraging other instruments like a native instruments machina that could also be used as a midi controller as well um, i've had mine back there first generation uh, for several years and i genuinely do that especially when i'm using serato sample you can check out my video on that and you'll see me triggering serato sample with native instruments uh, machina the pads on there so it's really entirely up to you uh, but i highly recommend getting some sort of midi controller or keyboard of some sort to get started and you don't absolutely need this you can easily draw in the piano roll the notes that you want to trigger i know in logic if you just hit i think it's uh tab the virtual uh computer uh, sorry keyboard comes up and you can trigger notes that way as well. So all things to consider, it's just my workflow in terms of how I started. I had a uh, virtual uh, MIDI keyboard to begin with. And point number six, especially if you are a uh, vocalist of some sort or your producer that knows you're gonna be recording uh, vocals to create your own samples or even when you're sending out demos to other singers to show them how you want something to be done, I highly recommend getting an affordable USB microphone with a pop guard. Most USB microphones, entry level microphones, whether it be from M Audio or other manufacturers, will run you just over a hundred dollars. And a pop guard is simple. I've seen it as low as five bucks going up to ten dollars. And what a pop guard does, it helps um, manage, you know, the p and the t and the, even a little bit of semblance as well. Like, so those high s sounds, it'll save you a lot of time and get you a quality vocal recording that you're looking for when you're just starting out. Point number seven is to consider your monitoring situation. This is either open back studio quality headphones or uh, studio monitors like the actual speakers. Like I have a pair of HS eights by Yamaha back there but to start out I had a pair of uh, Yamaha HS5s and the reason why I like those type of studio monitors is because they're self-powered and when I say self-powered that means it's already has an amplifier built into it whereas depending on certain speakers especially the older ones will require a separate amplifier and I just think if you're starting out you need a plug-and-go solution. So consider the HS5s. Those will run you anywhere between, in Canadian dollars, 180 to 250 each. So just up to about $500 for a pair 
at the most, and I'm sure you can get a used pair uh, a bit of a lower rate as well. The other thing to consider are open back headphones, as I mentioned earlier. The premium model are the Sennheiser HD 650s. Uh, personally, for me, I don't mix a lot in headphones in terms of my mix down uh, songs. I need to hear them on speakers like those back there, along with a subwoofer. Uh, and that's just me, but I know a lot of people who work very well with uh, studio grade uh, headphone uh, monitors and they're very comfortable with it over time. And you know, those could run you at the high end. I have the, H the Sennheiser HD 650s. Those are about uh, just under $900 Canadian. So it's quite an investment, but you can also consider uh, you know other uh, headphone solutions as well and that bleeds into my next point point. and my next point here is point number eight which is Sonarworks reference for some sort of sound calibration tool I mentioned Sonarworks because I just love it and I think it will save you a lot of time I certainly wish this was available when I started my production journey, but what Sonarworks Reference 4 does, and they have a headphone edition and a studio edition. So where I left my last point on the headphone piece is you can literally grab the software, I think just over a little over a hundred dollars. And what it will do is say, okay, pick the type of headphones that you have, um, whether it's a pair of Pioneer DJ headphones or whatever, and it will calibrate based on the profile of those headphones to get things back to the flattest reference point. So in some cases, depending on the headphones, it will lower the bass a little bit if there's too much bass coloring in those headphones, or it will boost it if it doesn't have enough to bring everything back to zero dB in terms of the flattest reference point across the frequency spectrum. And from a studio perspective, I think it's also great. I'm running uh, Sonarworks Reference 4 and I'm not being paid by them. I just love the product and it's really done uh, a lot of miracles for me in terms of saving time and just getting better mix downs overall. It avoids me having to listen to my mix on multiple reference points. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that even if you have Sonarworks, but I'm telling you, if you're just starting out, it's a good habit to get into hearing things at its flattest reference point possible. And it's a sound calibration software that helps you do that on a consistent basis. All right, so another important point I think people should consider is based on your lifestyle and what you will be doing with music is whether you see yourself as more of a mobile producer or one that's just centered, regularly working out of a room like this one so to speak and the reason why I'm saying that is because when you decide on the type of computer you want you really should consider a laptop so you can easily pick up and go uh, and plug into other people's studios and work with vocalists and record vocals whatever the situation is you want to make sure you have that conversation with yourself to determine what makes the most sense for you the other important piece here is to just be patient with the development of your sound. Just because you see this producer or that DJ slash producer have certain gear in their studio, it doesn't mean you necessarily have to go out and get that to achieve the sound that you want. It's better to grow into your sound and then grab the gear that complements that or helps you execute it accordingly. Like I said, my first sound card was an Apogee 1 and then an Apogee 2. And when I, you know, slowly discovered, hey, I like more of a warm analog sound that I'm trying to emulate in my productions, UAD made the most sense for me and I got that at a later time. And last but not least, my final closing point is what I'm going to call next level stuff. It's acoustic treatment. You don't necessarily need to get to this point on uh, day one uh, and please watch my video on acoustic room treatment um, where I discuss you know what's in this room how much it cost and why I did the things I did that is the next next level so if you're really pursuing this music thing seriously I would highly recommend having some sort of acoustic treatment to start off you can start off with um, uh, acoustic foam panels They'll run you about 20 or 30 bucks each on Amazon. 
and you can just place them at various points in your room especially if you have a lot of glass and you know windows in the room and flat surfaces I'd highly recommend uh, considering that over time but it's definitely not something you need day one especially if you have a tool like sonar SonarWorks uh, Reference 4 at your disposal. So something to consider, but it's next level stuff and it's not necessarily required day one. And there you have it. Those are my thoughts on how to get started in terms of the gear you need to produce electronic underground music or underground electronic music, so to speak. It just um, makes sense. You don't need everything at once and they're just various things to consider. But, you know, you don't have to break the bank while doing it. You can get started by looking at viable and affordable solutions. So let me know your thoughts on it. I usually join a conversation within 48 hours of posting these videos. So I'd love to hear what you think. And more importantly, do remember that I do have my Patreon where I do provide exclusive content in terms of weekly production streams as well as music that is only available on that particular platform. And then we have our Discord channel which is growing at a really uh, great uh, rate with a number of people who are providing great suggestions and support to one another as they aspire in their DJ and production careers. So much love and respect to you. Peace.